Help me doc, do I need to take an antibiotic for this? Fill in the blank, whatever this happens to be. The answer is very, very often, no. You don't need an antibiotic for that at all. It's not gonna help and it's gonna cause other problems down the road. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's talk about situations where you do not need an antibiotic and some of the problems that can come from that. And we'll also talk about the few cases where an antibiotic might have more benefits than harms for your health. Antibiotics have been ubiquitous in medical practice since way back in 1928 when Dr. Fleming discovered that mold juice has some antimicrobial, antibacterial properties. The problem is very often in modern medical practice, even though doctors have been talking about this for more than two decades, antibiotics are very commonly overused and used in situations where they're not going to help at all. Antibiotics, although very, very useful in certain limited situations, are a double-edged sword. No, nay, a triple-edged sword, which can cause many, many more problems than they ever hope to solve. Now, the first thing that you need to know is that your body is covered with bacteria each and every day of your life, from the day you came out of the womb until the day you're put in the coffin. You are covered with millions, if not hundreds of millions, of bacteria. They are your friends. They are not your enemies. That's just the outside. Now let's talk about in your ears, in your sinuses, in your eyes, in your mouth, in your gut, in basically every tissue of your body, there's some amount of bacteria that are beneficial, that are supposed to be there. You actually need them. You are not just an organism, singular. You're actually a super organism containing not only your cells, but the bacteria and the viruses and the fungi. So don't think that a healthy body is an antibacterial or an antiseptic body. That is a myth that needs to die. Now, let me explain a few things to you about bacteria and viruses very quickly so that you can kind of understand what's going on here. So bacteria do not cause the vast majority of infections that you have in your body over the course of your life, especially as an adult. Virtually every infection you have as an adult is viral in nature. Antibiotics do not work at all on viral infections, not even a little bit. Viral infections last for a few days, anywhere between three and 14 days. And unless they become trapped in a, a, a granuloma or a pocket, they go away on your own. Your body develops the tools and then destroys them and then they're gone. Some bacteria can make us very sick and even kill us, but the vast, vast majority of bacteria in your body are beneficial. They're your friends. You don't want to kill them. Antibiotics are like a carpet bomb. They are, there is no antibiotic that's just specific to the mean bacteria that you're trying to get rid of. They kill trillions of bacteria on your body, in your body, in every body cavity, they also hopefully kill the bad bacteria that you're trying for, but they also kill trillions of your bacterial friends. Antibiotics cannot kill some bacteria, and this is actually increasing because doctors over-prescribing antibiotics, uh, farmers and veterinarians misusing antibiotics to help animals get fatter quicker, and patients expecting antibiotics when they go to the doctor's office when really they have a viral infection and they don't need antibiotics at all. Overuse of antibiotics by the patient, the doctor, and on the farm all increase the risk of developing super bacteria that laugh at every antibiotic. I promise you, we don't wanna live in a world like that where you could literally die from a minor cut on your finger or a, 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 a minor bacterial pneumonia Back before 1928, when Dr. Fleming discovered the juice from his mold, that was life. You could literally die if you, if you stepped on a nail or if you got bit by a dog or a cat. That could be a potential death sentence. We, we want to have antibiotics. We want those tools at our disposal. But misusing them is a terrible, terrible mistake. Taking antibiotics either appropriately or even inappropriately, either way, even if you need the antibiotic, it is still going to contribute some degree to resistant bacteria forming. So you only wanna take them in the specific situations when you actually need them. Taking antibiotics can lead to weight gain. This is why 
Farmers and ranchers don't mind if they do giving unnecessary antibiotics to their animals, but because it makes the animals fatter quicker. Very, very often, the wise use of antibiotics means not using them at all in many circumstances. Many people can have a mild or severe reaction to antibiotics. And now if you're taking an antibiotic for an actual reason that it would have helped, that's just, that's a possible side effect of taking that antibiotic. But what if you're taking the antibiotic and it, it was completely inappropriately prescribed? You didn't even need it because you have a virus and then you have an anaphylactic reaction to that antibiotic. You went through all that suffering for literally nothing. Taking antibiotics very often when you don't need them can actually increase your risk of a long list of medical conditions, including asthma. Yeah, unnecessary antibiotic use can lead to increased risks of asthma, of allergic rhinitis, of atopic dermatitis, of celiac disease, yeah, of overweight and obesity. How many of you guys who are try fighting with your current weight can think back and go, oh yeah, I've taken a lot of antibiotics. And then also there's some limited research showing that taking too many rounds of antibiotics can actually increase your risk of attention deficit disorder. So if you have the symptoms of the common cold or allergies and you're not having severe sinus pressure or a high fever, this is 99% of the time Viral and antibiotic will not help that at all. If you have an ear infection, even ear infections, the vast majority of those are viral in nature and will clear on their own, but within three to 14 days, antibiotics will not help at all. If you have a sore throat with any kind of runny nose or cough, then you're not, that's, that's viral almost 100% of the time. The only sore throat that you should worry about is if you have an ungodly sore throat, a high fever, and you don't really have any nasal symptoms and you don't have a cough at all, that could be strep throat. Go to your doctor, get tested. If, if you are positive for strep, then you will benefit from taking the antibiotics, although the other potential risks remain. They don't go away, but in that case, the benefits probably outweigh the risk. If you get checked for strep and it's negative and you get checked for mono and it's positive, guess what? Antibiotics won't help mononucleosis at all. The vast majority of pink eye is also viral in nature. Uh, using antibiotic, uh, antibiotic eye drops is not nearly as dangerous and harmful because they stay in your eye, they don't really go into your gut into the rest of your circulation. Therefore, you pro you're protecting the other bacteria all over and inside your body. So antibiotic eye drops are not as big a deal, but give it a few days to see if it clears on its own. Now let's talk about cough, whether it's productive cough, any kind of bronchitis. If you've got just a low grade fever and you've got a cough, especially if it's a croupy cough or a hacky cough, 99% of the time that is not bacterial and you don't need an antibiotic for that. If you take an antibiotic, you're gonna risk all of the bad things I talked about earlier for no benefit whatsoever. Now, if you have underlying lung disorders, then you might wanna preemptively take an antibiotic in certain situations. That's a discussion to have with your doctor. You don't necessarily need to just have a standing order for an antibiotic and every time you have the least bit of a cough, even with pre-existing lung conditions, you still may not need that antibiotic. Now, obviously, if it progresses and gets worse and becomes bacterial, you're gonna know that because you're gonna have an ungodly cough, you're gonna have fatigue and lethargy and a high fever. In that case, if it's become bacterial pneumonia, the antibiotic benefits will outweigh the continued risks of taking the antibiotic. Now, if you have a urinary tract infection, you probably are gonna benefit from an antibiotic, even though the risks still remain. If you have Lyme disease, you're gonna benefit from an antibiotic. If you have um, any kind of vaginal infection or prostate infection, those are much more typically bacterial. You still wanna go see your doctor and get tested, but probably an antibiotic will benefit you. Now, let's talk about how you can have this conversation with your doctor and why your doctor very often gives you antibiotics that you don't even need at all. So the first principle to adhere to is don't waste your time and money going to the doctor if you have some minor infectious thing in your upper respiratory tract that you've only had for one or two or three days. Give it time to run its course. Red flags that you should maybe go to the doctor is a very high fever. 
is worsening symptoms, is a worsening, very productive, dark green, thick, mu mucusy, productive cough, uh, and just generally feeling like crap. Not, and so the flu will give you all those symptoms. It's still viral. Antibiotics are not going to help that at all. But if you are someone maybe who used to smoke or who has COPD, chronic bronchitis, bronchitis asthma, and you start to develop those severe symptoms, you probably should see your doctor. But you've got to keep in mind that doctors are just dudes and chicks. They are just humans, just like you. All of the laws of human nature that decide why they do what they do, all the incentives, all the motives are the same as they are for you. So your doctor knows when you're sitting in the exam room and they walk in, they know that you had to call for an appointment, maybe wait two or three days, maybe wait in the waiting room a couple of hours and, and, and pay a copay. They know all that. And so many doctors feel like that if they come in, examine you and go, look, this is viral and antibiotics not going to help this at all, that you're going to become upset, maybe even irate, and that you're going to be like, well, that doctor didn't do anything for me. I'm not going to go back there anymore. That happens very commonly, and there are patients out there who expect an antibiotic with the most minor runny nose, and they are unhappy if they don't get that. Don't be that patient, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to realize your doctor is just a human being, and, and they know that many patients expect them to do something, even if that something is more dangerous and less productive than if they did nothing whatsoever. Research has shown that 70% or more of every antibiotic prescription written is completely unnecessary and unhealthy and unhelpful. And even if you, you need it or don't need it, all of the potential side effects of the antibiotic, the gut bacteria problem, the autoimmune problems, the weight gain problem, all those things remain even if you need it or if you don't need it. So, what you should do is go into the doctor, tell them your symptoms. Don't tell them what you think the diagnosis is. That's not your job. That's their job, okay? Tell them your symptoms, how many days you've had the symptoms. Are the symptoms getting worse or better or just staying the same? Don't say things like, I really need to get back to work, doc. I'm This this is killing my... Pro no, that's not a symptom and that's, that's going to actually put added pressure on your doctor to give you an antibiotic prescription that you may not even need. Tell your doctor right up front after you've told them all your symptoms and the duration and if it's getting better or worse. That, those are very important things. Then you say the following to your doctor. Look, doc, if you think that an antibiotic will not help this, then I don't want to take one. So don't feel like I'm here to get an antibiotic. If you, if you say, dude, this is viral and an antibiotic is just going to be a wasted copay and wasted side effects, then I don't want it. Many doctors, when you give them that liberty, They'll immediately remember all the articles in the medical journals they've been reading for the last 20 years, and they'll say, okay, yes, I think this is viral. You don't need an antibiotic. Uh, you know, use some warm salt water gargles, take something over the counter that'll help with the symptoms, but the antibiotic's probably not going to help you at all. Another strategy you can use is say, look, doc, after they've written you the prescription for antibiotics, you can say, would it be safe and okay for me to just hold on to this prescription for three to five days? And, and then if it's getting better, not to feel it, not to take it. Or then if it starts getting worse or it persists past the three to five days, then I promise I'll get the antibiotic filled and I'll start taking it. The vast majority, because once again, you've given them liberty that you understand that you may not need an antibiotic. So in many, many cases, the doc will say, yeah, fold it up, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse. And in, in three days, four days, five days, if you are worse, get it filled. If you're no better whatsoever, get it filled and take it. But if you're starting to improve, you don't need it, throw it away, don't fill it. That's going to save you a copay, in, at least in the United States. And it's going to also protect all of your good bacterial friends from being decimated by an antibiotic that probably wouldn't have helped you whatsoever. Now, finally, if, if you say the, those two following things and the doctor says, no, listen to me, this is a bacterial infection. You need to take this antibiotic. Then if you trust your doctor, you need to take the antibiotic, even though there are still all the possible risk factors of taking that antibiotic. 
For you women out there, you might ask your doctor if you could get a prescription of something like Diflucan, 150 milligrams, to take on the last day of the antibiotic course so that you could prevent yeast infections from forming at various places in the body where you'd like to not have a yeast infection. So keep in mind that when you take an antibiotic, either if you need it or if you don't, you are encouraging resistant bacteria. You are decimating your gut bacteria, your vaginal bacteria, your prostate bacteria, your lung bacteria, your mouth bacteria, ear bacteria, all those good beneficial bacteria, you are decimating them. You are, uh, you are gonna increase your risk of gaining unwanted weight by taking any antibiotic, whether you need it or not. And ultimately, a lot of that antibiotic passes unchanged into the environment and then can encourage mean antibacteria, mean bacteria to form out in the wild, potentially leading to a disastrous bacterial epidemic in the future. That's whether you need it or not. So the only time you wanna take a, an antibiotic is when you absolutely need it. I've included some links down in the show notes to some of the research and some of the articles that have been published about this. Please give your doctor the opportunity to say, yeah, you probably don't need an antibiotic because many doctors will breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you're not gonna get pissed off if they don't give you an antibiotic for your runny nose or your mild cough. Also, if you'd like to ask me specific questions about how you do in this situation, do I need an antibiotic or not, please consider becoming part of our private community. We've got a bunch of people in there. The link's down in the show notes. Keep in mind that this video was made for adults. There are specific other situations in children and especially in young children when we doctors will default to giving them antibiotics quicker than we would an adult because they're more likely in some situations, not all, but some, to have a bacterial infection or to have the potential to develop a serious bacterial infection. So in many cases, in very young children and younger children, we will default to give them an antibiotic prescription, whereas in an adult, we would not. So keep in mind, this video is for adults only. Hope this helped a lot. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.